are building a religion. We are building it bigger. Hello, this is Lou Cubby with New Tech Press. Uh, this was supposed to be around the coffee bar, one of our live broadcasts from the Magma booth at the Design Automation Conference. Unfortunately, the bandwidth gods are not with us today. But Brett Klein of Forte Design is. Uh, so we're going to talk to him about what's going on with Forte and uh, his particular industry niche of uh, ESL and co-design and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So uh, what's going on with Forte? I mean, I, you are seeing stuff going on. You know, like, you know, all your competitors are getting bought. I mean, what's what's up with Forte? Always the bridesmaid, never the bride? Um, sort of. Uh, no, actually. Um the industry is uh, going pretty well, so first thanks for having me here, I really appreciate that. Uh, the ESL industry has had a significant shift in the last year. It's, it's being felt through the industry. It's not just us telling people or anything like that, it's now people seeing things happen. And so clearly... Ah, it, before we move on, yep. ESL means Electronic System Level Design. Uh, because that's a lot of people out there don't know what we're talking about. <laughs> yeah, so our definition of ESL is uh, the things that are happening above RTL design in terms of the next abstraction level. So you have the register transfer level today, which is fairly standard, but the migration because of basic design problems that people are having in terms of design capacity, productivity, challenges at 40, 28 nanometer, and so on. So. Um, so we've been off working on that for the last 10 years or so, and of course, you know, lots of people like Gary Smith have been encouraging the market to go this direction. Um, but in the last, say, three to six months, some major changes have happened. Uh, many, uh, several different companies have been acquired in terms of high-level IP and also uh, high-level uh, high-level design like Coware, uh, Denali was just acquired in terms of IP, uh, Virage, uh, recently Symphora was acquired. Um, and so there's a whole bunch of different players that are now consolidating into the big three companies. Right. And so you asked if we're always the bridesmaid. Well, yeah, yes and no. I mean, we've been leading this market for the better part of the 10 years. Certainly there's other technologies on the market as well. Um, but we've held a revenue lead, uh, despite what Gary Smith says. And uh, we have certainly a mind share and market share lead in terms of the real usage for ASICs and SOCs. So what's new is that ESL design or high-level synthesis, which is our particular niche, has gone mainstream in, in a lot of companies. We're now over 250 ASIC and SOC tapeouts, where five years ago we may have been down at 20 or 25. Uh, major, major companies that produce everything from the TVs in your living room to the DVD players to your multifunction printers in your office uh, to SSD controllers, hearing aids, and so on have used high-level synthesis in production designs for silicon that you can buy in Best Buy or Fry's today. Okay. So that's a major shift for us where you know people really don't a question whether it's true or not, but you can now physically buy TVs or things like that that have been used with, uh, with Forte's products. Okay, so uh, the big question that I'm asking around uh, the floor is, you know, last year I was asking you about the issue of semiconductor profitability, and everybody gave me the stink eye. Uh, today it seems to be the major issue behind all the messaging here on the show floor. So has Forte had any impact in reducing the cost of semiconductors and what do you see going forward as being the, the driving force for that? That's a great question. You know, we, um, we hear from customers all the time what their major problems are and I think everybody here is resources are really tight. And so uh, they say to us, well, we're having trouble you know, designing our RTL. We don't have enough engineers or we can't meet time enclosure because it, it takes too long. And these are the types of problems that we can solve and ultimately re reduce their, their costs in terms of uh, overall chip costs. So how do we do that? Well, there's basically uh, two or three ways. So you start off by productivity. We can lower the number of engineers or improve their overall uh, time to market with uh, time to RTL. Uh, and the second thing we can do is we can lower the overall area that the design has, which is a, a major you know, importance. So typically high-level synthesis can beat RTL design, hand-coded RTL, by 10 to 20%. Uh, uh, with, with Synthesizer, there is no trade-off in terms of giving up area. It's just not something you have to do with that. So you get the area benefit. And then the third thing, which I think is really not well understood, is that uh, high-level synthesis can address time enclosure problems. We can design circuits in such a way that you will not run into design closure problems down the line. 
and ultimately that can save months, uh, sometimes years, off of uh, uh, time enclosure in terms of engineering years, off of uh, design projects. Okay. So it's quite an interesting market, um, but every single customer says it costs our problem and semiconductor profitability, and uh, we have to justify ourselves as a small company. We don't give away tools for free, we can't afford to, and so we sell these tools, customers pay for it, and they pay for it because there's a very strong ROI tied to their costs. Excellent. So who are you working with now? Uh, in terms of customers? Yeah. So our announced customers are Sony, Toshiba, Rico, Sanyo, uh, Oki, Epson, Olympus. We've got a, a number. We're about 25 customers around the world. Okay. We've also broken into the U.S. market more recently um, and also have several customers in Europe, uh, NXP being our flagship customer in Europe. We also have customers in uh, Korea, you may imagine, and uh, customers in Taiwan, like Global Unichip. So we have customers in all major regions now. Um, where it was always Japan for many, many years, we now have uh, uh, customers in the other regions as they become less skeptical. Okay. And so it's an important transition for us, but it's a, it's an opportunity to see the market um, really expanding in terms of usage. Excellent. So that's good. All right, so thank you very much, Brett. Uh, this has been Luke Covey with Around the Coffee Bar at the Magma booth, sponsored by Magma and Beepike. Thank you.